Hi scholars, welcome to the module on comparative designs. Our objectives in this module are to describe components of multi-treatment designs, describe components of alternating treatment designs, and describe components of adapted alternating treatment designs. So these are the general features that apply to all comparative designs that we'll address in this module. Uh, there is adherence to baseline logic with a couple features in the comparative designs. Each case serves as their own control. Replication is essential. And data can be visually inspected using our six methods of visual analysis for trend, level, stability, overlap, consistency, and immediacy of effect. Some general guidelines to keep in mind when you're using a comparative design, your purpose really is to um, compare two in your interventions to see which works best for the individuals for whom you are intervening. Um, first, you want to identify in the research literature that the two interventions you're comparing are effective. Once you've established that they each have a base and are backed by empirical evidence to support effectiveness, then you can move forward in making a comparison of competing interventions, a comparison of some innovation with those interventions, a comparison where you're refining the intervention, or a comparison that adjusts some contextual variables. We control for threats to internal validity with our comparative designs in a couple ways. We want to be mindful of that multi-treatment interference. We can see things like carryover effect or sequence effects um, or alternation effects. So randomization of um, our two comparisons is really important in this design. We also want to ensure that we have equivalent difficulty of behavior sets um, and be watching for separation of treatment issues. So the multi-treatment design, um, for example, an A, B, C, B, C design. With this design, you're seeking consistent difference in trend or level changes, and you're using it with only one reversible behavior. You want to try to include at least three students so that you can counterbalance as a way for guarding against threats to internal validity. And stability within a condition is important for visually inspecting the results of your multi-treatment design. So fill in the missing blanks on this slide with what you know about multi-treatment. Identify a what kind of behavior, reversible or non-reversible. You may opt to use a pretreatment baseline. You determine the order of conditions. And you can compare only blank conditions, adjacent or non-adjacent. Some of our threats might relate to sequence and carryover. So the order of the treatment could have an influence on the performance, which is why counterbalancing and randomization are really important here. Um, carryover characteristics were, again, one um, condition, the, the characteristics in that condition might influence what we see in the other. Which interventions can be compared using this multi-treatment design in order to demonstrate experimental control. Select the one that would let you see three demonstrations of effect at three different points in time. 
So in summary, these multi-treatment designs can be used to compare different interventions. It's best to counterbalance and have at least three participants, and it requires one reversible behavior. Another comparative design is the alternating treatments design, also called multi-element, multiple schedule design, and sometimes simultaneous treatment design. So with ATD or alternating treatments, we're applying treatments to the same reversible behavior. We determine ahead of time order of conditions, and then we do rapid alternation of conditions across days or within a day. So doing two treatments per day across sessions. We can see these multi-treatment effects sequence, maybe the order in which you conduct those in a given day or across a set of sessions has some sort of influence that so we want to rapidly alternate, randomize, counterbalance, and carry over threats where what happens in one condition affects another, um, kind of gives this residual advantage in the another condition. These threats um, are things that we want to guard against in this design. One feature that's critical to um, the ATD design is that your participant or subject or student has to be able to discriminate or communicate which treatment condition they're in. So say, for example, your um, study is like comparing a picture to a video. The child has to be able to know and name, oh, this is the picture one, oh, this is the video one. We want to counterbalance our extraneous variables. Some variability is okay. That's kind of a natural part of um, change, but we want the overlap to be low. And with this design, because you're comparing two, um, it's possible to establish which is the superior treatment, and you can sort of prolong data collection and demonstrate the effect with that superior condition only in a given phase. So here's an example from a published study where we did a pre-treatment baseline. We've got the alternating treatments, in this case, um, what the researchers are graphing are really four data paths here. They're also kind of monitoring a no intervention. They're embedding that baseline in into the alternating treatments rapid randomization phase. Then they've established which is superior. That's the count method for um, teachers actually counting the praise that they're giving, praise statements. Um, so when teachers count, that method seems optimal and it's maintained um, as well. So we've got multiple phases in this alternating treatment to allow for us to see um, demonstration of effect over time. This rapid um, comparison with the alternating treatments, there should be an equivalent number of data points for each treatment um, for us to make this comparison. The adapted alternating treatments design, the AATD, differs from the alternating treatments design in a couple of key ways. One, we need two or more behaviors. The advantage here for um, those of us intervening on academic IEP goals, this does not require a reversible behavior. Um, so we can use AATD with non-reversible behavior. The participant again has to be able to discriminate which treatment um, is being applied at a given time. We want to determine the order of conditions and counterbalance across participants. Usually with this design, you would try to conduct two sessions per day, alternating the treatment in the given day. We use a pre-treatment or baseline phase with the, alter with the adapted alternating treatments. Um, generally recommend the best practice and sometimes prolong to show the superior method um, in effect. The conditions in our comparison 
phase should be the same number per treatment. And what we're looking for is um, a consistent difference or separation in the data path, the trend and level, um, to determine which is superior. So for adapted alternating treatments, we can use non-reversible behavior, something that's not in the participants' skill sets. Um, the behaviors the two behaviors should be independent, equivalent in terms of function, and um, of equal difficulty level. The threats hold as they do for the alternating treatments design. Things like multi-treatment threats, uh, we would want to name those in our limitations. Um, we'd want to control for sequence or carryover with our um, rapid alternation, randomization, counterbalancing, um, and we'd want to ensure and get some expert opinion or do some piloting to ensure that these behaviors are functionally equivalent of the same difficulty level and independent. So here's an example with our pre-treatment baseline. Um, in this study, the authors have comparisons um, in their use of print speech and speech print for this one participant, Carl. Um, what we're looking for is level and trend. Is there a separation? Does it look like we have a superior um, treatment method here? Another comparison design that allows us to um, evaluate non-reversible behaviors is the parallel treatments design. Um, this design is sort of like two multiple probe designs superimposed on each other, if that's helpful to visualize it that way. Um, we, we need multiple behaviors of this same level of difficulty. And we're going to make our comparisons between behaviors within the same tier. So thinking multiple probe across behaviors, we want tier one, tier two, tier three, the same um, tier that we're comparing. And we can, with this design, demonstrate a functional relation, even if we don't achieve a superior treatment method. So they can both be um, shown to be effective because of the way the design is laid out where one could be shown to be effective the other one cannot. Um, the challenge with this here is we do need a minimum of six functionally independent behaviors non-reversible of equivalent difficulty. We counterbalance um, the treatment implementation so that we can control for those sequence effects. The participants must be able to discriminate which condition they're in. Again, we usually do two sessions a day um, and often set this learning criterion so that this behavior, this non-reversible behavior, can be achieved. There aren't very many studies out that demonstrate what this looks like. There's, you know, like a, a small handful. Um, it's a uh, Fun design to try, but it's a challenge to find six functionally independent behaviors. So here's one example um, of a comparison in these word sets where we've got a um, plain text word and then a another representation with this sort of modified orthography or image superimposed that helps cue the meaning of the word. So these word sets were constructed using traditional orthography and modified orthography and then divided into three sets. Um, so you can kind of visualize here how this is like a multiple probe across behaviors um, for traditional orthography and overlaid on that, the modified orthography where um, the data points are 
counterbalanced in terms of when they're collecting, which one went first. Um, and then as you visually kind of inspect across tiers, you can see for each set which appears to be the um, the most effective. It seems like the TO traditional orthography is yielding a higher percentage across um, probes in the design. Here we see the actual stimuli presented in these um, parallel treatment conditions. A couple advantages that makes parallel treatments superior to adapted alternating treatments is the way that it can control for those threats to history and maturation. We can um, conduct that across participants to even get more in subject replication, but we do see, because we've got three tiers with those six behaviors in subject replication, you can also gather efficiency data, like how quickly do they acquire the behavior, how many sessions, how many minutes, and answer those kinds of efficiency questions. Um, and because we can um, carry out those probes across um, sets, we kind of have this inherent design to allow us to assess maintenance. So we use our visual analysis with the designs. We're looking for the um, adapted alternating treatments, parallel treatments, and alternating treatments to see a, a clear separation in the data point paths. We need at least four comparisons. So you want four cycles of um, collecting data on both or more than two treatments um, so that we can establish experimental control in this design. Here's a research question in a kind of traditional format. Is there a difference in the percentage of 10 second intervals with social initiation under intervention B compared with intervention C? So alternating treatments, the Social initiation is thought to be a reversible behavior in the context of intervention. We can rephrase that using um, Rob Horner's recommended structure. Is there a functional relation between intervention B versus intervention C on the percentage of intervals with social initiation for preschool children with autism spectrum disorder? So here's um clinical data on what, what this research question yields as we um, conduct this study using a scale of 1 being weak to 7 being strong. Write the experimental control for this alternating treatments design graph 1. Write it now for alternating treatments design graph 2. Write it now for alternating treatments design graph 3. Rate it now for alternating treatments design graph 4. Rate it now for alternating treatments design graph 5. Rate it now for alternating treatments design graph 6. And rate it now for alternating treatments design graph 7.